After almost five great years with my Intel MacBook Pro, all reliable right here, it's finally time for me to move on to the brand new hotness, the Space Black MacBook Pro M3 Max. Wow, that, that's actually a lot to say. <laughs> now this decision to upgrade was not an easy one at all. I took so much time learning all of the differences between the Apple Silicon Max, like features, design, processing power, and I just wanted to share my thoughts with you on what differences actually matter so you can make the best decision when you're looking to upgrade to a new MacBook Pro. Even if you're not upgrading and instead you're looking for a brand new MacBook Pro, you should find this video very helpful, so let's get right to it. As a quick disclaimer, I'll only be covering the differences between the MacBook Pro models because I'm a video editor, software engineer, and I definitely needed a Pro laptop to fit my workload. Let's start off with some of the differences in the design when it comes to the Intel MacBook Pro versus the Apple Silicon MacBook Pro. Apple didn't go too crazy with the design changes for the new Apple Silicon MacBook Pros. You can see they got the same sleek metal finish, same iconic Apple logo, and the colors that they offer are mostly the same too. For the M1 and M2 MacBooks, they come in silver and space gray, but for the M3 MacBook Pros that just came out, it comes in silver, space gray, and the sexy new space black. I've been a MacBook Pro user for over 10 years now and I usually go with the space gray option, but as soon as I saw that space black option, oh man, I knew it was over for me and my wallet. <laughs> as soon as I got to see the space black model in person, I instantly fell in love, but it's not exactly what you might expect. The space black model is a little bit lighter and shinier than it was advertised in some of the commercials. It isn't like a deep matte black like I was sort of expecting, especially when you compare it to my black Steam Deck or some of my other black tech. But still, I really like this unique look and Apple actually hasn't made a black laptop since like 2006. The space black is a little bit more prone to fingerprints than the silver and the space gray models, but honestly it's not too bad. I think Apple did a really good job with the new coating that they have on the laptop. Now let's move on to the differences in the actual body of the MacBook Pros. Both the 14 and 16 inch MacBook Pros are a little bit bulkier since they added more ports and a bigger battery, but overall the build design stays really slim. The Apple Silicon MacBook Pros also have bigger feet at the bottom to keep them more stable. Also the edges of the new MacBook are more rounded and less sharp than their Intel counterparts. And finally when you open up and compare the screen size between the Intel and Apple Silicon Macs, you can see the screen is a lot larger, they have made smaller bezels and put a little notch at the top. Overall I really like the changes that they made for the body of the new MacBook Pros, especially the rounder edges because it just makes it a lot more comfortable to hold and carry around. Now let's get into the differences that matter when it comes to the features between the Intel Max and the Apple Silicon ones. First off, we have more ports y'all. Finally, all Apple Silicon Macs come with an HDMI, SD card slot, a MagSafe charger, and several USB-C ports. The days are over where you needed to buy all of those stupid adapters and hubs for your new MacBook Pro. There's a small part of me that might miss this really sleek USB hub that I used for my Intel MacBook Pro, but overall, I'm so glad that I don't need to remember to bring this around. But if you're interested in a sleek USB hub like this one, I'll make sure to leave a link below in the description. I love that I don't have to carry around multiple adapters and wires, I can just pick up my laptop and go about my work knowing that I have everything that it needs. I no longer need an SD card when I'm recording or editing videos, when I'm at a hotel or a friend's house, I can instantly connect my laptop to the TV through HDMI. The possibilities are almost endless. But let's move on to the next big feature, the bigger, brighter, smoother screen on the new MacBook Pros. As soon as I booted up the new M3 Max MacBook, I could tell immediately just how much more brighter and vibrant the screen actually was. These new Liquid Retina displays are absolutely amazing. They can reach a peak brightness of up to 1600 nits, which is more than twice the amount of brightness that you had on the Intel Max. And with the ProMotion feature, the newer displays can reach up to 120 hertz refresh rate compared to only 60 hertz on the Intel Mac. Basically what all of these numbers mean is that your screen is actually a lot brighter, you can go outside and work in the daylight and you can see it a lot more easily than you could on the Intel Mac. And it's a lot smoother, so if you're scrolling on a website or watching videos, you'll see that the footage that you're watching in the video is actually a lot smoother and the page scrolling is just a lot smoother. It feels so nice. Now let's get into probably the most astounding difference between the Intel MacBook Pros and the Apple Silicon MacBook Pros, the battery life. Most of you probably already know this, but with Apple Silicon, Apple has been able to make their own chips and integrate it with their hardware and software a lot better, which makes the overall laptop experience a lot more efficient. More efficiency means more battery life, up to 22 hours of battery life to be exact. 
Since I've had this new MacBook Pro, I really feel like I've never had to actually think about charging this thing. When I go away for the weekend, I just unplug it from my Thunderbolt display. I can do a little bit of video editing while I'm on the train or at a friend's house and come back home two days later and this laptop still has a little bit of battery life left. I know my Intel MacBook Pro was late in its battery life cycle, but I'm so glad that I don't have those moments where I'm going, oh crap, my laptop is about to die. Nothing happens like that anymore. But that's enough about efficiency. Now let's get into the actual power of the M3 Max MacBook Pro. Now when it comes to processing power of the new MacBook Pros, I know that many other people have already done the benchmarks and everything like that, but what I really cared about is how much faster would it help me during video editing and when I'm working on software development projects like making a new app, how fast can I build my code? So first, when it comes to video editing, I already was using my Intel Mac for a lot of my TikTok videos and short form, but I knew that I wanted to create YouTube videos like this one, and I would be recording and editing in 4K a lot more. Editing on the Intel MacBook Pro was okay, honestly, for those use cases, but I really wanted to take advantage of the new encoders on the Apple Silicon MacBook Pros. So I did a quick test and copied a 4K video project on the Intel Mac and the Apple Silicon Mac to compare just how much faster the exporting speed was on the newer one. So let's go to the clip of that test right now. All right, so we got the same project loaded up on the Intel Mac and the MacBook Apple Silicon, and we're gonna export this project. It's 4K, about eight minutes, as you can see, and we're gonna see how long it takes for each of them to export. All right, here are the export settings for the Intel MacBook Pro. And we see we got the timer ready. We're going to click export and see how long it takes. And it's done. So for an eight minute long 4K video, this export took a whopping five minutes and 47 seconds. Let's see if we can do better on the Apple Silicon. All right, so we got the same exact project loaded up on the Apple Silicon Mac. We're going to click export and see how long it takes. And we're almost done. So for the same eight minute 4K project on the Apple Silicon Mac, it took two minutes and 30 seconds to export, which is about half the time that it took to export on the Intel Mac. And plus, as a bonus, I did not hear any fan noise at all while this thing was working. Now let's move on to code building speed. For those of you that don't know, I'm also a software engineer and I like to create iOS apps in my free time. And mainly I use Xcode to do that software development. And one of the major pain points that I've always had with Xcode is how long it would take to build and run the code sometimes, especially when I'm debugging or testing out a new feature. So I did another quick test to compare just how much faster the build times were on the new MacBook Pro versus the old one. And let's cut to that right now. All right, so we got the same Xcode project loaded up on the Intel Mac and the Apple Silicon. I've cleaned all the build folders. We're gonna press run at the same time and see how long it takes. And we're gonna start the timer at the same time as well. Let's see if I can do this. All right, there we go. Both are running and let's see how long it takes to finish running. All right, so as expected, the Apple Silicon Mac finished first at around 44 seconds and the Intel Mac is still building actually. Let's see how long that takes. So both MacBooks have finished building and running the project. The Intel Mac took a total of two minutes and 33 seconds to finish, while the Apple Silicon Mac took a total of 44 seconds to finish. And that means that the Apple Silicon Mac is more than three times as fast when it comes to building and running the same Xcode project. Outside of video editing and software development with Xcode, I really didn't notice much of a difference between the other day-to-day -day tasks like web browsing, watching videos, or typing up a document. There just really wasn't much more for the computer to do in that case. Now let's get to the final and my most appreciated difference between the Intel MacBook Pro and the Apple Silicon ones, the fan noise. I swear, there would be times where I'm working on my Intel MacBook Pro and have nothing but a few Chrome tabs open, and that thing would sound like a jet taking off, for real. <laughs> and when I compared that to the noise level on my new M3 MacBook Pro, the difference was night and day. I haven't even heard the fan noise on my new MacBook Pro outside of maybe a slight whisper, and perhaps I just haven't pushed it to its limit yet, but this really shows how much more efficient the new MacBook Pros are. And as far as the difference in heat that both laptops generate, well, I really didn't notice much of a difference since I don't keep my laptop actually on my lap or anywhere that's touching my skin, so I don't feel the heat coming from the laptop. I just hear the fan noise. 
So now that we've gone through all of the differences that I think actually matter, let's answer the question, should you upgrade to the new Apple Silicon MacBook Pros? Trust me, I know MacBooks and Apple products in general are not cheap by any means. And I'm gonna be honest with y'all, I mainly got the M3 MacBook Pro because of the space black color alone. It was just so cool and I had to get it. I really felt like Apple's marketing team was targeting me specifically when they came out with that new color. But if you're not like me and you don't feel like the space black color is something that you need, then honestly, there are better uses for your money. Don't get me wrong, the upgrade from the Intel MacBook Pro to the Apple Silicon MacBook Pros is definitely worth it in general, especially if you're looking for better battery life, more ports, faster workloads, and a much better screen. But do you really need the newest and shiniest M3 MacBook Pro? Probably not. And if you're looking to upgrade or buy a new MacBook Pro in 2024, then I would actually advise you to get the M1 Pro or the M1 Max. Even though Apple doesn't sell the M1 or M2 MacBook Pros on their website anymore, you could still find them brand new at other retailers and save a lot of money, especially if you get one that's refurbished or used. With all of the extra money saved, you could buy more accessories for your MacBook, buy more storage, or just keep that money in your pocket. And if you're upgrading from an Intel MacBook Pro like I was, you'll still see a huge difference in terms of efficiency and processing speed no matter which Apple Silicon Mac you choose, M1, M2, or M3. The jump going from an Intel Mac or something similar to an M1 Mac is a lot bigger than the jump going from an M1 Mac to an M3 one. And I would only advise someone to get the M3 Macs with all of the specs top of the line if they were running some heavy workloads like running some 3D modeling or doing some AI model training. If it wasn't for the new color, I definitely would have bought the M1 Max instead and saved a ton of money. So in short, I'd suggest that you take the time to think about your day-to-day -day workload and how much more would it improve by upgrading or buying a new Apple Silicon Mac before you spend too much money. <laughs> and if you've watched all the way up until this point, I just wanna say thank you so much. Your support has definitely helped grow this channel. We recently hit a thousand subscribers. I'm so hype, y'all. And if you're not already subscribed, make sure to hit that button below so I know to make more videos like this, and I'll catch you next time.